video to some of my other ones talking about where I talk about grip alignment. Basically, we're looking this time at the pinion and bevel gear meshing and making sure that everything is sitting on the best angle to get the healthiest sounding blaster or gearbox. What we, I'm trying to do when I do this is reduce as much of the noise coming from the gearbox as possible. So really it's just the piston slap that you have. So all the cycling of the gears and that, very quiet. And then you just have the, the, the slap of the piston. Basically I just use this tool that I made up. It is adjustable um, and I'll go into that in a bit more detail. You can buy these. I think they make 3D printed ones. Probably a little bit better than this, I would assume. I have never seen one, so I really can't comment. But you can buy them. I just couldn't be bothered. Anyway, all it's going to do is it's going to help us get the perfect angle or the alignment of the pinion and the bevel gear and just make sure everything is sitting in the right spot. So, let's get into it. So there are a couple of things I do is you would see in the other video, you know, I make sure you measure the gap here, make sure that the grip can actually butt up hard against the gearbox. You don't want any gaps. So if you go back to my previous videos, you'll see how I measure all that, line it all up properly. And then again, there's some things you can't avoid, like some of the grips. I guess the way they manufacture them, they're all slightly a little bit off. Uh, whereas when you buy high quality gearbox like that, we know from the machining process and from the quality control that comes out of, uh, like say MK Tactical, that is always exactly the same. The only thing that changes is your grip and the receiver because you can't guarantee that those are perfect because quality control from the country where those come from is probably not as good as quality control in Australia. So before you go blaming that, have a look at all these items to make sure they all line up correctly. One of the things I do to make sure that everything is lined up correctly is I've got a my own little tool that I use that I use to check to make sure that when the motor is inside the grip, it's sitting at the right angle. So it's not sitting like this, it's not sitting like that. Because you can shim the gearbox as, the gearbox as good as you can and if you get something like that, it's going to sound bad no matter what. Or it's going to have that little annoying noise. And I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I don't like that screechy, whiny noise that comes out of really poorly built gearboxes. I cannot stand that. So I do spend a lot of time making sure everything is, is as perfect as can be to reduce that noise and make it sound really healthy. So. <clears throat> Excuse me, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, basically it's it's really simple, it's just this tube here that is basically the same diameter as the hole where the motor tower feeds up into the gearbox, very close. I have just put a bit of metal tape around there just to make sure that it is very snug when I close the gearbox up, and then I have a, a hole there. Now you can drill two, two holes. I've only drilled one hole because the equipment I have here, I didn't trust that I was going to get that 100% accurate and I didn't want it to be out of alignment at all. So one hole for me is perfectly fine. And it just sits inside the gearbox like so. And then I can close the other half of the gearbox on top. I just need to line that hole up that I drilled with the hole with the bushing holes. And I just slide this down into there to make sure that that is perfectly centered. And then you can just put your screws in just to make sure nothing moves. That basically goes in there to make sure that alignment is perfect. Now this one is adjustable because there's all types of different grips and I found that the little motor height adjustment screw or grub or whatever you want to call it, they're all different diameters so I had to make something that 
would fit all the grips that I do have. You'll find that this is not going to work with that style grip. So if you have that style, that is not going to work. But with this one, it's perfectly fine. So I'll just do a quick demo. Normally I would screw it on. I'd screw the grip on just to make sure that everything was as it would be on the blaster. And as you can see, my little DIY tool po pokes through. And then when I close this, I push that grip right down. And you can see right there that it is pretty much spot on. So I know when I insert the motor and everything is put back together, that is going to sit on the exact or the right angle. It's not going to be slightly to one side or forward backwards and that's going to help with the, uh, the sound of your blaster. So if you were looking at something like that, that clearly you can see that the alignment is going to be off and it's going to actually be tilting your motor slightly. So you're going to get noise from the beveled pinion. So ideally as close to that as you want. See so this is a pretty good grip. I, I won't use this grip because I don't actually like it but I'm using it as an example that that is pretty much spot on. That's what you're looking for. Uh, I, I do have some other grips uh, but I can't locate them at the moment where it's actually more to the side like so. So I actually haven't used them. I will save them for another build and maybe we can just shim it out a little bit so it sits more centre. But that's basically it. It's a handy little tool you guys can make yourselves just to double check your alignment of the motor and the pinion. Sorry, the motor, pinion and the bevel gear. Make sure it all lines up. Because I do see a lot of blasters and they just noisy as hell. Whereas if you do something like this and spend a little bit of extra time, you can reduce that sound by quite significantly and have a really nice crisp blaster. And the reason why I've made this one adjustable, so I can adjust it, is because some of the bottom of the grips have this style kind of, uh, it's like a bottom, I'm not even sure what you call it. And other ones they just pop straight off, which is the ideal one. But because these ones, or most of the ones I have, are like this, I needed to make it adjustable so that I can actually close the bottom. Very simple tool, very useful tool. Okay, something else to consider the pinion heads. So, two different types here. The one on my left, that is more the style that you would find on your cheaper motors has very thick teeth I do not like them and that's my personal preference whereas these ones or well, this style is more found on your more higher end motors not exactly this style but very very similar I will put a picture of the ones that come with the Tynely and the ASG I do prefer these ones because if you look at the teeth they're a fraction smaller they're not as fat that allows you to have more adjustment when you're doing your beveled opinion shimming so also consider that when you're doing your builds if it doesn't sound quite right have a look at your pinion head maybe it might pay to swap it out to something like this and have a play around and work out what works best for you because like I said this is just my personal preference I do prefer these ones because I find that the range of adjustability when you're doing your beveled pinion is a lot more than the other style. So I think these are advertised as SHS steel cut pinion gears. I'm not sure if that's the right description, but definitely have a look at these ones, or this style I should say. The ones you find on the Tynely, and I think ASG, they're, the teeth are even sharper, so they don't have that rounded edge. They've got quite a sharp edge. And those are my preferred pinion gears. Anyway, something for you guys to think about. Anyway, I hope that helps uh, somebody. That's pretty much it.